Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Civil War Generals 2, the 1997 Sierra Classic, uh, which allows you to fight through the American Civil War in a turn-based uh, war game in many ways, similar to kind of a tactical level of like a Panzer General type game. We are currently fighting through Jackson's Valley Campaign in the Grand Campaign as the Confederacy, and we are in the process of fighting the Battle of Winchester. The battle has started off on a, on a good foot for us. Uh, the Yankees uh, have lost at least two regiments surrendered to us, uh, but they still have many good units left, many strong units left, and we're currently trying to make a play to break the Union left and uh, in so doing destroy the rest of the Union army. This was recorded just the other day, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop back out and turn it back over to the recording and pick things up, and I'll catch you guys at the end. 100% okay with it. Meanwhile, two more regiments just arrived. If we could hit the supporting units in the rear with some artillery, that might help even the score a little bit. Or at least lessen the effect of any attempt by the Federals to mass an attack. Right, both these batteries need to move forward, so they will. 7th Louisiana still trying to recover. Alright, so we'll see what happens here now. Alright, so they did launch an attack against our defenders who were not dug in. I did move the whole line, which means I didn't dig the line in, and now they're launching multiple attacks here against this lead unit here, Harmon's unit, Colonel Harmon. Harmon Rab. No, not. Um, can we get around them? I doubt they're just going to sta stand pat and let us... At ease, man. At ease, man. Let's bring these troops up to try and flank. And then let's actually... I may be getting a little bit too cute, but I am going to let them attack one more turn. I'll bring my cavalry forward a little bit. Camp hell over here. I guess that could be some tempting bait for them too, these troops in column formation. The enemy artillery has recovered to some extent, it looks like. Are these federal guns just out there in the open waiting for us to charge them? Looks like it. Alright, so we just instantly drove those guns back. We'll go ahead and bombard them and maybe we can route them again. Yep. All right. Well, congratulations, Yanks. You got one battery back up, and we instantly drove it off. All right. Meanwhile, we're bringing up the rest of our artillery. They may be a little bit vulnerable for a few turns. Let's bombard this cavalry here. Hitting the troops mainly that are a little bit off the, the front lines that I'd be worried about assisting in, in an attack against us. Alright. Louisiana, or 7th Louisiana is going to do their thing. Alright, so these guys are going to get attacked. First Maryland for sure. Confederate First Maryland is going to get attacked for sure. One fresh infantry and a bunch of cavalry all swarming around them. But we'll see what happens here. There are battery focuses on them. Meanwhile, they did successfully drive the 5th Virginia back. Twice. And then into the rear where they get attacked again and routed. Okay, this is interesting. They didn't attack on the right flank. So... In theory, we can surround them, right?
probably don't want to do that. Probably don't want them. Well, I guess that's the only way to do it. None of the other troops can make it there. So you're going to have to send some troops that are unable to form into battle line. So in theory now, we have these three federal regiments, a big portion of their army, surrounded. And now we need to use the artillery to make sure that we can attack them successfully. The main question is how we want that broken up. I think the first thing is to launch a bayonet charge at the 27th Virginia against the 29th Pennsylvania. We will pay the 800 morale cost to do it. And wow, we instantly forced that first attacked federal regiment to surrender. That was a better result than I had even dared to hope. So now we can go ahead and focus on the 5th Connecticut, which I think I am going to launch a bayonet charge against them with the 33rd Virginia, which won't need any coaxing. They'll be able to do it right away. And that federal regiment instantly surrenders. There was an attacker. The leader of the, the Confederate unit was wounded, but that's a second federal regiment forced to surrender in a single attack. And now I think what we're going to do is we're going to launch Wheat's regiment forward against... Actually, first things, let's, let's actually soften up this federal regiment a little bit since we don't have quite the same caliber of unit attack about to attack it. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll launch, actually let's do this. We'll move wheat into position, but we're actually gonna attack the 46 with, oh, we can't attack it with cavalry. Huh, all right, well, wheat, you're gonna go forward here. We're gonna spend a lot of army morale to convince you to charge. And there goes a third federal regiment surrendered. Commissary Banks, huzzah! Okay, very good results for us there. The entire left wing of the Union Army is basically gone. Um, let's unlumber these guys. We should be able to surround the third Wisconsin next turn, if not next turn, very shortly thereafter. We'll see where they go. I'm trying to box them in so they can't retreat too far because I'm assuming they're going to realize they're almost surrounded as well. But three federal regiments all surrendered this turn, all on the left flank, three huge federal regiments. That brings us over to 3,500 Yankee casualties uh, surrendered in addition to the 500 and some odd that have been killed or wounded. Um, that brings, I mean, I don't know how, I don't know how they have 308 victory points unless it's just holding the objectives for a period of time. But, uh, in any event, that's over 40,000 weapons cost captured as well. So we have had a couple of units that have been roughly handled, but in general, this, uh, battle is going well. I'm going to go ahead and pound both these units here with our artillery. We're going to see if we can drive this enemy battery off. We're also going to try and hit the enemy... Cavalry as well. All right, so I think all of our guns that can fire have. So we'll bring these guns up. Except for there's one battery in the rear here that can still shoot. So we'll go after the column formation Yankees. One other battery back here, but I don't know if they have any targets. Doesn't look like it. All right, we'll limber them up, bring them forward. Addy, Seventh man. Virginia or Seventh Louisiana is working their way back up, ready for a fight. All right, let's see what we can do here. Nice. Can these? Will these guys rally? No, they won't. But their morale went up a little bit. Addies, man. All right, we'll bring. Uh, Jackson Ford, he can set up his headquarter over here on the right. We'll see what the Yankees do now. Those guys did move west and attack the 10th Virginia. That's a little bit of a, uh, an aggressive move. Kind of surprised about that. I don't think I can move my troops in totally to surround them. I can move my cavalry down here. 
I can almost box them in, but I don't think anybody can actually attack them either. So we'll have to wait a turn to, to get the Wisconsin Regiment. The artillery can't even bombard them. This, this can. All right, let's try and bring these guys down to size a little bit. Lessen the likelihood that they route our unit in the next turn. I don't have great lines of sight for some of my artillery here. You know, all these guns here on the right are going to go for the enemy artillery here. We're just going to focus on the artillery this turn, actually. I really just want to drive their guns back. Okay. I can't believe they haven't run yet. That's really surprising. Their morale is so low. Meanwhile, these troops over here on the right just seem to be content to stay in place. That's weird. Mm. We're going to advance our whole line. I mean, the, the whole Union left flank is gone, so we're just kind of moving our troops forward here now to see what we can bag from the Yanks. So we'll move our left forward, see if maybe we can get the Maryland Regiment surrounded. We'll see what the Wisconsin Regiment does next turn. There are some federal guns here that are in action. Fifth Virginia rallies. Wisconsin Regiment can't move. All right, so let's pound these surrounded Wisconsin boys. All right, now we're gonna do a cavalry charge here against him, and we forced him to surrender. Another Yankee regiment gone. Now we can bring our cavalry up north to try and get around whatever other troops they may stand in our way. This is turning into a triumph. All right, can, who can... These guys can't even shoot at anything. Our cavalry... Our artillery's too far back, apparently. They can shoot at this regiment. All right. All right, so we have the first Maryland surrounded as well. We'll go ahead and attack them and force them to surrender. So that's two more Yankee regiments gone this turn. And now we just have to approach the Brigade of Federal Cavalry in Winchester itself and the lone Yankee regiment that we still have in sight over here. There's also some artillery that we know is around somewhere, but we haven't seen it. Okay. All right, we finally got the Yankee gunners to run. Virginia rallied. All right, so there's a battery of artillery there. I mean, I don't know if we'll be able to actually chase and surround these guys or not. It's pretty clearly going to be a victory. It's just a question of whether we can actually seal the deal here. What do we stone them? We have no cartridges. All right, we'll draw some ammo. We've captured enough of it. All right. Interestingly enough, their cavalry is not running. I'm going to try and sweep wide around them. I don't think they'll uh, fire from up there. I mean, our horsemen are going to be vital if we're able to surround them. 
in Winchester itself. It's got to be the hope. I'm trying to send some troops up north around the flank up there. Moving them into column formation so they can move a little bit more efficiently. Some of these guys are moving cross lots or through open, open terrain. Some of them are moving over good marching ground. There's some artillery up there around. These are not terribly good roads, but some of this artillery I'm just allowing to hang back. All right, let's try and route this battery here, the 4th US. We drove them back. We didn't route them, so they instantly withdraw when we start hitting them. So now we're just going to kind of keep focusing on them and see if we can drive them back a little bit further and maybe reroute their artillery. I'm really just focusing on the enemy guns. I want to keep them out of action as much as possible. Okay, move these guns forward here. These guys can hit from way back here. They haven't routed, but they're not going to probably do anything. Meanwhile, I've got more troops than I know what to do with. Yule's back here like, hey, we got these extra brigades coming online and we don't even, we haven't even sent them forward. That's some pretty good sized units that I completely forgot we even had. And those guns can't hit anything from back there. So move them forward. Limber them, move them forward. All right. Well, in the turn, Interestingly enough, the 10th Maine decided to attack in Winchester. Their cavalry is sweeping around the flank, probably to go for the objectives. Okay. Alright, so we now have these guys surrounded. First things first, let's charge this Pennsylvania artillery, drive them back into the infantry hex. We did that. Now we should be able to bag both of these guys with a good firm charge from the 18th Louisiana. I don't really want to no, spend sir. morale points to convince them to attack, but we might have to. It doesn't look like anybody else can attack, so I do want them to surrender. Can we bombard them first? Doesn't look like it. Eek. That was a dumb attack. Alright, you guys have no ammo. Let's go and pound this enemy. Cavalry here. Try to dissuade them from trying to take our objectives. Alright, so we hit them with a bunch of artillery. And that did seem to dissuade them, or at least drove them back. Meanwhile, we've got a bunch of extra infantry coming up over here. We'll just march them east along these roads. So the Federal and the Cavalry doesn't get any ideas. Can we get these guys onto the roads? Moving forward. Artillery is probably exhausted. We've got a huge train of troops up around here on the right flank. And now we are going to go ahead and spend a thousand points to convince them to charge. Forced, we forced the artillery to surrender, I think, not the infantry. Although the infantry is probably not breaking out. Their uh, morale won't be good enough for that. Meanwhile, I am moving some infantry adjacent to this federal infantry regiment. It's a bit of a risk. Their uh, morale is probably high enough to allow for an attack. But, and actually we're going to surround them with uh, columned infantry. But the one thing here is he, he can't defeat all of them. And all of them are in marching column, so he'll maybe drive one back or at least bloody one and we'll take some losses, but then we should be able to instantly force that unit to surrender in the next turn or so. Okay, these fresh troops just arrived. And more troops down here by the middle road. Um, I think we have one more battery of artillery back here. We'll go for the first Michigan which seems to have really good weapons and is very large. And then we'll finish off this artillery, or sorry, we'll finish off this infantry unit here next turn, I think, the 10th main. 
All right, the, Pen the Pennsylvania Zouaves attacked and drove back one of our infantry units there. Meanwhile, a wide flanking maneuver here by the Federal Cavalry. First things first, though, let's finish off the 10th Main. All right, two conventional attacks, no charges later. The enemy is forced to surrender. Meanwhile, they drove back the 21st Georgia. Wow, we did a bayonet charge against the cavalry and they held firm. It's pretty surprising. I hope we do a cavalry charge against them. All right, drove them back there. These guys can move here. These guys will move here. All right. So we've surrounded the Pennsylvania Zouaves, Zouaves, but they will be able to attack, maybe even drive drive us back. They could attack east and maybe get themselves out of the scrape. If they continue to decide to attack um, west, then they might win. They might drive us back a hex but I don't think that's the result they really, really want. Nice, routed. Because they're just gonna charge more deeply into their trap. Right, let's see if we can route this cavalry here with hitting them with a lot of artillery. A lot of our guns are very low on ammo. Nice, all right, we drove them back with artillery. Can we drive them to route? Not quite yet. Bunch of our infantry is coming up here. Alright, I mean, I don't know what this cavalry thinks it's doing, but it's not going to accomplish anything. Meanwhile, the 7th Louisiana is arrested from their ordeal. I guess, um, Yule should move forward now. So, all right, the Massachusetts regiment has surrendered. You got your one attack in against the six Louisiana. I'd like to bag the whole Union Army. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. I think the cavalry will probably be too nimble for us. But it's a nice thing to think about. We're into Winchester now. Another Yankee regiment surrendered. All is well. Just the five regiments or four regiments of cavalry, one of artillery, and I think one more of infantry is all that's left of the Federal Army, the proud Federal Army. All right, so we'll go ahead and end that turn. We'll see what happens here. Mostly standing pat. All right, so let's pound these guys a little bit. Oh, you have no cartridges. Well, that's a problem. Who said you could have no cartridges? Uh, apparently none of my guns can reach. Well, one of them. One of our batteries can reach them. Two of our batteries can reach them. Okay. Three, but they might surrender if I do that. Nope, they didn't. Good. Or not surrender, but desert. Because I didn't want them to desert. I wanted to defeat them in battle. So we charge them with cavalry again. Another cavalry charge. Another federal unit surrendered. Alright, so we're going to try and get around the enemy horsemen. And I'm even going to tempt them by marching in their front with infantry in column formation. Just because that seems to be a temptation that, rightfully so, any commander in this era really struggles to resist. Meanwhile, this enemy artillery over here should be able to be bagged. Yep, 
they're already routed. Now we just need to attack them, and they'll surrender for us. So another victory there. Fort Collier, Fort Collier is ours. No, sir. All right, so I think all that's left is these troops down here. We might actually, we it's 1,500 hours. There's not a ton of time left in the day. But there, there's a chance we could even pin them against the edge of the map and force them to surrender in that way. If that's a direction they head. Let's go ahead and hit this cavalry and do what we can to make sure they can't effectively attack. Or at least just get some casualties. Um. Alright, I think that's going to do it for this turn. Let's go ahead and make sure we keep saving this game. We'll see what they do. So they do charge forward. I was right about that. They charge forward against uh, column infantry. Two attacks against it. And they don't, they do kind of, sort of try to get themselves out of their scrape, but they don't, I don't think they do enough. So let's see here, we can, this is a long line of troops to try and surround. But we do have a lot of regiments to do it with. Uh, okay, so we have them surrounded. We do. Um, these guys, I think, are the ones who were attacked. We'll switch them into line of battle. We'll move all these guys into the proper formations. We'll go ahead and hit the strongest unit with artillery. Actually, the freshest unit, I think, might be the right one to attack. So that's the first, uh, main. First, Maryland is the strongest. What, you don't have any ammo? You haven't replenished yet? Alright, so we routed these horsemen, but they don't have anywhere to go. And actually, now that we drove them back one hex, now we can go ahead and start reducing this pocket. Because there's nowhere else for any of them to retreat to. All right, that looks like that's all the attacking we can do this turn. Oh, the Mar the main guy's deserted despite having a full morale bar almost. Interesting. All right, the routed horseman did move. But I can't close that. Oh, I can close that gap, okay. All right, so I think the last two federal units we might be able to get to surrender next turn with four turns to spare. Where did the deserted troops go? Did they, like, run? Can they run through lines? First Vermont surrendered. Is that the last Yankee unit? It might be. All right, let's go ahead and end the turn. It doesn't say there's no one around. Can we declare victory? The enemy has slunk away in the nighttime, sir. They knowed when they was beat. This one looks for the history books. All right. Victory there, no doubt about it. A massive one at that. A major victory for the Confederate cause. 217 Confederate killed, 497 wounded. One leader was wounded. The Federals lost 244 men killed, 578 wounded. Uh, for about 30, a little over 100 more battlefield casualties. But that ignores the 500 men they had desert and the 6,600 men they had surrender. All told, federal casualties were close to 8,000 compared to less than 1,000 Confederate casualties. A brilliant victory that would make Stonewall Jackson's name ring out in the history books for sure. Uh, 15,458 15, supply captured, 120,000 weapon costs captured. That's going to be huge in allowing us to re-equip our soldiers. Um, 1,722 victory points from Hexes versus 265. 2,423 victory points versus 209. Um, at this point, we have two options. We can fight either the Battle of Cross Keys, which is alternate one. Um, so these are 
uh, I guess, some of the last battles. And we'd, be, we'd basically be continuing down Jackson's historical uh, valley campaign. So Cross Keys in the next day's battle at Port Republic decisively defeated two Union armies and freed Stonewall Jackson to join Robert E. Lee in the seven days battle before Richmond. Once again, the Confederates showed how deft maneuvers and clever use of terrain could thwart a larger, better equipped enemy. So the Battle of Cross Keys continues the historical valley campaign. Because we won at Winchester decisively, however, the game also gives us an option to fight the Battle of Harper's Ferry early. So this fictional battle at Harper's Ferry follows the Battle of Winchester. Stonewall Jackson, fresh from a major victory, chases the fleeing Federals to the town of Harper's Ferry. If Jackson can defeat the Union Army and take the town, he will strike a decisive blow to the morale of the North and panic Washington, causing McClellan's forces to be recalled back to D.C. So if you win the Battle of Harper's Ferry early, then not only do you win Jackson's historical valley campaign, but you also win it so decisively, even more decisively than historical, that the threat of your armies in Harper's Ferry just across the river will drive the Union to withdraw from the valley or withdraw from the peninsula all the way back to Washington and will completely negate the need to even do the Seven Days Battles. If you fight Cross Keys, then presumably what follows after that is the, the Seven Days Battles, like six or seven more battles. If you fight Harper's Ferry, however, uh, you can win essentially the Seven Days without a single casualty, uh, which would be tremendous because historically the Confederates lost like 20,000 men in the Seven Days. It was not a pretty affair. Uh, their army was, was actually hurt worse than the Union Army was in those campaigns, uh, at least uh, physically, not morale-wise. Anyway, guys, I think at this point, this is a good time to, to pause and ask you what you think we should do. Do you want us to do the Harper's Ferry scenario and go for a blow at Washington and, and pulling back McClellan from the peninsula? Or do you want us to go with the historical cross keys, which then allows us to fight through the historical uh, seven days? Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.